Hi everyone and welcome back if you're returning. If this is your first time clicking one of my videos, hello and welcome and I really hope you do come back. So if you've never clicked one of my videos before, I'm a seer, I tap into past, present and future energies. I'm an oracle, I'm a healer and I'm a divine channel and all my meshes right now are twin flame related. So chances are if you've been guided to my channel you could be a twin flame because I'm a twin flame myself. So right now all my guidance is for twin flames, so there's a good chance that if you've been guided to this channel, you are one too. So I, I start all my messages the exact same way, by calling in my divine protection for me and for you watching this video right now online. And then we'll tell you what the message is. Calling in my heavenly ancestors, my spirit guides, the archangels of love and light and the ascended masters of the highest pure divine light. I call you in now for your love, guidance and protection throughout as I bring forward a clear message for the Twin Flame Collective. Thank you. Archangel Michael, can I ask you to surround my children, my dog, my home and myself in a golden bubble of God's protective light at all times, as I bring this message forward for the Twin Flame Collective. Can I also request Archangel Michael that whoever watches this message online, you surround them, their loved ones, their home and pets in a golden bubble of God's protection also. Thank you, Archangel Michael. Archangel Metatron, can you please stabilise the connection between myself and spirit, ensuring that only clear and concise messages can come through for the Twin Flame Collective's highest and greatest good at all times. Thank you, Archangel Metatron. Sending love, light and gratitude to you all. And so it is. So my tear, I've already got tears coming out of my eyes. Um, it's not helped, I'm just in from a walk with the dog. <laughs> but this happens sometimes. Anyone who watches my video will know I often get tears, especially when spirit comes close from my left eye. So, okay. I'm getting tears from the right one now, is it? Perfect. <laughs> I promise I'm not sad. Although I did get a surprise. I, earlier on, I opened my back door briefly. And I thought I saw a, a white moth come in, but I wasn't sure. But I looked around and I was like, I can't find it anywhere. And just as I went to switch on the camera, it was sitting here on my head. So I just had to stop recording and go and just take off my head and put it out the back. So hopefully we get no more interruptions from moths, but it was funny. Because I was looking around and where is that moth that was sitting right here on my head? So... <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is quite a specific message. And this is the first of two messages tonight. This message is very, how can I put it? There's something, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you how I got to this. So let me go on my glasses. I'll clear the energy first and then I'll tell you exactly what could be going on with this message. very strange I just saw I just saw the Lady Portia card from my other deck of cards I might need to use that deck of cards in my next reading my next my next reading is specifically for golden children indigo children rainbow children whatever you whatever you see yourself as depending on what year you were born in and stuff like that so my next reading is specifically a starseed reading with lots of Atlantean and Lemurian energy coming through and clearly I've used a deck with Lady Portia in it so that's noted. But um, So this morning when I woke up, the song that was coming through so strongly, when I woke up it literally was coming through in my head. Um, it's a song called One of Us and it's by Joan Osborne and it's What if God was one of us, just a slob like one of us. Just a stranger on the bus, trying to make his way home. So that's the song I got. So I thought, well, that's there's a message right there. And then I was led to, so I'm putting back on my glasses. I was led to John, 
John chapter 10, verses 29 to 37. Now, those chapters are all about the man who had been, it's all about um, love thy neighbour, okay? And one of the disciples asked Jesus, who is our neighbour? And Jesus told him the story about how there was a man who had been robbed and beaten. His clothes had all been taken and he'd been left for dead at the side of the road. And Jesus said, a priest saw the man attacked and beaten and bloody and crossed the street and avoided going near him. A Levite walked towards the man who was on the ground beaten and broken and crossed the street to avoid dealing with the situation. And I, a third man who he referred to simply as a Samaritan came to the man's aid. He put the man onto his mule or whatever his, his animal was that he had with him. And he took the man to the nearest inn. He stayed with him, he cleaned him up, he healed him, and he left money with the innkeeper to keep feeding and keep um, building up this man who'd been beaten and all his clothes robbed. And Jesus said, that is what loving your neighbour is. It doesn't have to be somebody who's right next door to you. It just means being a good Samaritan. And so there could, there, there I feel there's a strong energy come through here of somebody could be about to be tested in a very big way by, now, that, that song, What of God Was One of Us, just a stranger on the bus. There could be a situation for someone coming up here. Now, this is, I say, this is a very specific message. Um, there could be someone here who's about to come across a situation where it might seem a bit strange, uh, but you might be to maybe come to the aid of someone who really needs a Samaritan. And then I also was led to look chapter 11, verse 1 to 10, and that's all about when Jesus sent out 72 disciples, um, basically to to spread the word of God and see if those 72 disciples took up this mission for Jesus. So there could be an energy here around someone who is going to be tested and then given an opportunity to answer the call and step up. Now, as I say, I don't know if this is a specific twin flame message. This is just a message I had coming through because then I saw a burning bush today, which is um, all connected to when, when um, God came through and declared himself Yahweh, to to Moses and the bush was on fire but wasn't actually burning like there was no harm done to the bush so it's almost like that for me is very symbolic of um even when things get get you know um when things blow up and become very um fiery and quite dangerous god will still protect and that's the kind of, um, I thought I got rid of all the moss and then one just flew past. <laughs> and then, so there's definitely something here. And I was getting something about holy fire, burning bush. Um, so there's something very powerful. Now this could be somebody, I, I just feel this is someone who's about to be tested. Um, someone who could be about to be tested as a good Samaritan. Or this could be somebody, and I'm definitely, I was feeling that kind of um, Joseph or of uh, Amarethia kind of, um, I, I never say that right. But somebody, Joseph or of Amarethia took took charge of Jesus' body at the time of crucifixion. He asked to remove Jesus from the cross. He took him, he wrapped him in fresh linen and, you know, really, really handled the body with care as did the, the women and he put um Jesus into a cave that he had specifically set aside. Now Joseph of um I always say it, I think it's Arithme Arith, or something like that. He had put that cave aside. That was a man made cave he had made for himself to to be buried in because he himself had been searching for God and searching for a way to connect with God. So he he felt that this was his way of trying to connect with God, connect with the Father more by doing this one thing. Um, so there's something here about that as well. So I've got my Christ Consciousness deck, I've got my Dragon deck, because there's strong dragon energy coming through, a lot of Avalon energy coming through as well. So 
this could be a very specific message. As I say, this might not even be for twin flames. It, there's just this. I feel this message is to go out to someone. Um, I'm going to get some scripture cards first of all. And then I will get some archetype cards. As I say, I'm getting a strong Avalon energy. Sort of knights of the round table. That kind of energy as well. Like knights being ready for something. Can I get some scripture please that best describe this energy I'm feeling? Okay. So somebody could be about to be tested here and judged in some way. So to test their to test their um faith and to test if they are up to the job here for being one of the 72, like one of the like one of the 72 Jesus sent out. So it says there is there is judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. And that is John 12, 48. And the other one is, you may ask me for, for anything in my name and I will do it. So I do feel like someone has been tested, their faith has been testing, tested here. This person may have shown no faith or no, um, this person may have definitely chosen not to have faith in the past or maybe they had a reason to turn away from God in the past. But this is God saying, if you deny me, you know, um, so it's almost like this God is saying to this person, I feel this person has been tested by God, basically is what I feel. And then when he, when he passes the test, you may ask me anything and I will, will give it. So the other one that came out is, Blessed is the one who does not walk, walk in state with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but who delights in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. So, again, I'm, I was feeling that kind of Ten Commandments energy with Moses coming through. So there's something, there's a very powerful message for someone here. Now, this could be someone who maybe um, mocked you for your faith. And this is someone God now wants to test to see if he can prove to them. I feel that someone is about to encounter an experience with God that's going to make them into a believer. That's what I feel. Someone is about to, somebody who maybe rejected God in the past. Someone who chose to stay in low vibrational energy. I feel they're about to have an experience with God. Now, this could be your divine masculine. Um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of your wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is an understanding. So, yeah, Proverbs 9, 10. So I do feel there is something, somebody's about to experience a moment with God here who is going to completely change their entire way, their entire belief system here. I feel like God is like, you want proof? You want proof of me? No problem. Now, I don't know who this is. Now, this is somebody who definitely could have a strong connection to Jesus from past lives. It could, you know, be Peter energy or something. The energy of Peter. Um, so be joyful in your hope, patient in your afflictions and fruitful and faithful in power. So I think God is going to show this person if if you can pass this test and show me. I just had a little, <laughs> well, um, it's, I, I don't know, it's like um, I get kind of goosebumpy things up here from spirit. If you can show, if you can, if you can overcome your afflictions and move out of this kind of, um, I do feel this person chose to possibly reject the call. They chose to stay in a, a very toxic situation. But God is saying, if you can overcome this challenge and you can pass this test, then there's hope. There's hope. I do feel like God is about to demonstrate just how powerful he is when tested. 
Now, I don't feel this person has been punished as such. I just think this person is going to be tested and it's almost like, um, as I say, it's almost like um, God is saying, if you want proof, if you want proof of me, I will give it. So, so it says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. <laughs> so Matthew 6, 34, and I think that's a good message for us all about being present, living in the now and not worrying about, I mean, if we waste a day worrying about tomorrow, then we've wasted a day. <laughs> so be present and always be present. Um, so... I'm going to get um, a few archetype, archetype cards. Um, I've got some little Avalon message cards as well. I'll get them at the end. Because I do feel a very strong Avalon energy coming through. Can I get some energy for what's going on with this person? Okay. Now that chrome card came out again. It came out last night. Now the chrome card is always... Um, I mean, the chrome card is like a wise old sage as well. It's like, you know... Um, it can be a wise person with a lot of knowledge and things like that. Um, but it also came out with a flame card. So the flame card is like a, something being re-sparked, something, it's like the flame of passion. For me, it definitely represents like the flame that burns between two souls, between two twin souls. Somebody, yeah, some, there's been some sort of loss or grief here. Somebody's grieving the loss. So the mother card, divine mother energy, feminine energy. Okay, truth and clarity about something. I'll, I'll clarify this with some tarot. Thank you. The mask. There's some sort of truth come out here. Somebody has been keeping something hidden. The siren. Temptation. That's the temptress. And that's sitting right beside the old crone. So as I say, this kind of witchy energy. Um, and the thread. Somebody was trying to hold on to someone or something. Somebody was trying to keep a thread attached to someone. The heart and the bridge. Somebody was trying to keep some sort of attachment to someone's heart here, their heart chakra. But this, this, yeah, the healer. So I feel whoever I'm picking up on here that I think is about to be tested in some way to check to see if they still. So I'm just going to tell you what I feel. Um, I've not got my past life cards here. I should have them out here because I feel this person definitely has a strong connection to a past life with Jesus. Definitely something to do with the 72 that were sent out to represent Jesus. Definitely something to do with that burning bush. This is someone who has all in past lives who's always had very much strong trust and faith in God, always been very close to God in past lives, but for some reason they turned away from God and it's to do with whoever this side in old crone energy is here. Um there's been a lot of sadness and regret. And I think now this person is going to get some sort of final test from God to see if they're ready to step into their their night energy. I feel like God is saying, you know, you reject me. Yeah, there's some new beginning coming in here, the womb. I think God is offering this. This could be a fallen, fallen angel. Cave. In the womb so the cave is when um going within to spend time with your higher self with your guides the cave is where you go it's kind of hermit energy where you go to face your shadow spend time alone hmm, the bardo 
the in-between. This person is in some sort of in-between energy. I always laugh because that's basically my eyeball. Because <laughs> my eyes can be turquoisey and then green and then brown. Um, that my I've got kaleidoscope eyes. That's what it's called. Every time I wear a different colour, if I wear green, my eyes go green. If I wear blue, my eyes go blue. If I wear kind of darker cars, my eyes go brown. So this is literally my eyeball up close. <laughs> I love that card. But yeah, this um this person is at the in between right now in the cave. In the in between, so oh, this card up to down as well. The offering. This is sacrifice. Martyr energy. Mhm. Mm the maiden. Oh, so the maiden is purity. It's the virgin energy. It's. It's um, not even just divine feminine energy. This is like pure angel, angelic energy. This is like the Virgin card and the other archetype deck. And somebody could have, now either um, somebody very pure hearted um, sacrificed something for this masculine or this masculine sacrificed his love for this pure energy here. So it's definitely a twin flames situation because I keep staring at the twin uh, at the flame card. Um so it's definitely um but somebody's grieving the loss of a connection with you, the medallion. So this is like um this is that can be like an heirloom, this is like something your ancestors have passed on. Somebody may actually have some sort of amulet or medallion or something from their loved ones. Yeah, okay. So this is, this is balance, this is seeing truth and clarity of the situation, the scales being balanced and the card of unconditional love is here at the bottom. So something has been balanced out here, there's some sort of, yeah, some sort of ancestral heirloom or um, inheritance or something waiting to come in to this masculine but I think he has to go through some sort of test. So as I say, I feel like he he rejected his call. He re rejected his journey with you, divine feminine. He stayed in some sort of lower vibrational energy because of some sort of temptress side energy here. Sorry, that. Oh, I'm not taking half the deck. What was the one that came out there though? Yeah, as I was talking about the the temptress look, the venom. Toxic energy. The vow. This, I really want to get a past life card, but it'll make it too long. <laughs> I feel this masculine has made some sort of vow to you, Divine Feminine, but I feel he's made some sort of vow to God. And I think God is like, well, you made this vow to me, you made this pact with me, and now you're trying to walk away from your journey. You're trying to walk away from the vow you made to me. There, this person could be a powerful healer. They could have healing magic. Yeah, but this is some sort of twin flame DM. Mm -hmm. So I think God is about to let this person encounter the mystic, yeah, this person is some sort of magical healer who had some sort of vow either with you, Divine Feminine, or with God, or with both, that they were going to ascend the underworld. This person has hit rock bottom because of some community, the village card, that's community, the shadow, the orphan. Yeah, this masculine has definitely um, shapeshifter. Yeah, they've been dealing with some sort of shapeshifter, crone energy, siren energy. The orphan card, this masculine has abandonment issues and possibly whoever they were dealing with as well, some sort of trauma bond. The shadows, so this masculine has definitely been caught up in a very toxic energy. 
Um, and I think now, God, they're about to be tested. The eternal child. So definitely something here about healing their inner child wounds. Cause I, with the orphan card, that's somebody who has a lot of imagining issues as well. So yeah, so in a, in a word, I feel this masculine rejected. His journey with you, Divine Feminine, he stayed in a toxic um, energy to do with some kind of temptress, siren, karmic en energy here, um, who got in the way of this twin flame connection. King of Swords. This person is being pushed to communicate with you now. Three of Pentacles. This, you and this person have some sort of divine mission together purpose together oh my goodness the cards are feisty tonight sorry about that <laughs> king of wands ace of wands it's now is the divine timing for us to come back together but this person is being tested first and i feel this person has gone through an awakening um they want to take action they want to communicate they want to speak their truth they have been waiting an opportunity. Now, I feel they've been told to wait by God because I feel that like God wants to test them properly to see if they are the good Samaritan. They, they won't let them, won't let this person return to Divine Feminine. Nine of Cups, unless they're out of this overindulgent energy. I get kind of um, just toxic behaviour. Yeah. A lot of illusions, toxic behaviour, confusion about what they want to do, who they want to be with. What You know, this is kind of like just someone who just goes uh, to heck with it. I'm just going to do it. You know, this is someone who didn't care. They just had options. They were overindulgent. This person is about to be tested now. <laughs> the sun. God wants to see if this person truly can step into their full masculine energy here. Step up into the light fully. Mm -hmm. they've, all had, they've walked away from some sort of karmic energy. They've walked away from the Queen of Swords. Now this Queen of Swords could have been their partner. Somebody they were living with. Doesn't have to be, but it's definitely something here about overindulgence. And somebody allowing them to be overindulgent. Eight of Swords. Yeah, this person's in their head about messaging you, but they do want to come in and speak their truth and offer it. I mean, this person has got motivation now. Yeah, Three of Cups. This person wants to celebrate with you, but I feel, as I say, this person's about to experience a moment with God. And it's a test. And it could be someone they're about to meet on the bus. And I feel with the scripture cards we had, that is God saying, you know, you I, I, I do get fallen angel energy from this masculine. And I feel this masculine has some sort of, as I say, strong connections. I mean, the burning bush came through very, very strong today, Emperor. This is a divine masculine. This is just a divine, divine, a divine masculine who allowed himself to stay in toxic energy far too long. So the Wheel of Fortune and the Six of Pentacles, this just screamed to me of, I told you there's some sort of um, divine inheritance due and I don't think God is willing to give it until he knows this masculine is completely in the light and completely stepping into his role. Yeah, there's some sort of test, Ten of Cups. There's divine inheritance. There's a lot of abundance, happiness, joy, a very beautiful future here, a partnership. And the Four of Cups come out upside down. It literally come out like this. So I think God wants to make sure there's no more distractions. Is this person being tested right now? So this person's lack 
of action so i'm getting in action in ability yeah two of wands seven of wands three of swords knight of wands this person had an inability um yeah two of swords this person had no they it's almost like i get like kind of, a kind of arrogance to be honest like i'm having too much fun just having my options this person just wanted to be in non-committal energy but there is a divine purpose you both have here there's some sort of divine partnership that is required and it's something to do with some sort of vow or promise this emperor made to carry out something yeah to carry out some sort of mission for god here so seven of swords eight of wands four of swords this masculine's been silent trying to figure out how they can move past this deception with you they want to communicate they want to reach out to you hierophon i feel they are definitely in moving into their hierophon energy but until they have fully proven themselves nine of wands warrior energy proving themselves nine of wands proving that they're not going to give up proving that they're going to keep fighting Proving their worth here, proving their hydrophone energy, proving that they deserve their wings back. <laughs> Six of Swords, lovers. Proving that they can move this connection to Cameron Waters with you, Divine Feminine. And I think if they can set fully into the hydrophone energy, then I think, yeah, and actually speak the truth to you, be open and honest and come in with some sort of love offer here. Divine Feminine, I feel that you are going to, yeah, look, King and Queen of Cups. Wow, I was going to say, Divine Feminine, I feel that you're going to welcome this masculine back with open arms. And then the King and Queen of Cups come out. You, you love each other. Simple. You love each other. But, but I feel God wants this person to undergo a test, to just test they are completely ready for this connection. Yeah, the Magician and Ten of Swords. All this person manifested in their life was betrayal, but also I feel like God wants this person, if this person is trying to manifest a new beginning with you, they want this person to make sure there is no more conflict and disagreements. This person has to be completely honest the moon no more secrets no more deception no more hiding the emotions from you no more betrayal you guys are really powerful manifestors but in order to for this connection to work there has to be complete honesty and you both love each other at the end of the day king queen of cups past life soulmates full card there's a new beginning coming in here judgment And, but I feel the judgment card is just more this masculine is under the watchful eye right now of God. But there is some sort of awakening taking place or taking place. Pisces, Sagittarius energy in both those cards. So then my energy is coming through just while I'm saying that. Uh, so I've got Aries, Leo, Sag, Gemini. Cancer, Pisces, Cancer, Pisces, uh, what's that one as well, what's that one, yeah, Cancer, Pisces, Taurus, yeah, Taurus, Taurus, Pisces, Gemini, Cancer, Leo Aries Sagittarius. If this masculine can overcome the conflict, <laughs> Five of Cups and the Five of Wands, if this masculine can overcome the conflict this has been caused in the past, if this masculine can pass the test here and come back to this feminine, Tower and Six of Wands. Now, Towers 
are good in my mind, especially with the Six of Wands. This is, you know, God is going to tear down all the past, all the, the negativity. Page of Cups and Four of Wands. This will, this will lead to a new beginning for you both. This tower will come crashing down. I think it will put you both through some sort of tower moment. I think this will be some sort of... I do feel this is going to be some sort of... Um, I'm, I'm hearing the word reckoning, but I don't know if that's the right word. But some... When you and this masculine come back, you start to talk. Yeah, I just put the deck on the Ace of Wands. It's like, I, I just get, the time is right. The timing's right. If this masculine can pass the test, the timing is right. I'm going to get, let me get some Christ Consciousness cards. And let's see, as I say, I do get a lot of kind of Avalon energy, kind of nice around table. So I'll get some meshes and I'll get some dragon cards and some meshes from that deck. So I'm very aware of it. another one to record sometime, not to make these too long. And thank you to all the people that have seen me like me. I just literally channel until the messages come through. And sometimes, you know, they take longer. I mean, I, I can do shorter ones, but I don't feel like I give very much information. Okay. Can I get some cards on this um, energy I'm picking up on for you, this masculine? <laughs> So Mother Mary's energy coming through, first card out on the table. So I definitely felt there was some inner child healing going on with this masculine right now. And beautiful Mother Mary's energy. She comes out in nearly every reading these days. I think she's, her energy is surrounding a lot of the collective right now. Um, oh, I just saw another moth coming. Um, this masculine definitely has some sort of abandonment issues. It could have been mother wounds or something that made him choose a very toxic energy who maybe reminded him of his mother or something. Unity, so it says um, coexistence and tolerance. So this card is just all about the collective energies, the, the conscious, conscious um, collective consciousness. And this masculine is now understanding that that kind of cause and effect um, thing that's happening and that how that that collective consciousness really affects everyone in different ways. If this person's starting to understand now the concept of unity consciousness. So sisterhood, the feminine way. So this masculine's definitely um, trying to balance out his masculine and feminine energies, but I do feel the feminine here has a lot of influence over this masculine's current healing. There's definitely something, um, I mean, this is, for me, this is like Sisterhood of the Rose and Mother Mary was the first card out. So there's, this is definitely a twin flame connection that has a lot of connections to, I keep on saying the word connection, sorry, that has a lot of, a lot of connections to biblical energies. And I'm feeling that strongly just in those three cards alone. I mean, even when I look at this, the beach here, it reminds me of um, like Jesus and the disciples spent a lot of time sitting on the beach. And it's just, I'm getting that kind of vibe where there's like some sort of like sisterhood of the rose, brotherhood of the rose type energy. So Joseph, fathering and responsibility. So this masculine definitely could have lacked, I mean, his inner child wounds could have been father wounds. He may have felt like he never really had a proper father figure. Maybe he, um, you know, maybe he is set to become some sort of mentor to other people. But I do feel this masculine has a lot of inner child wounds. Now, it doesn't have to be mother wounds. As I say, it can definitely be father wounds. Um, Holy Spirit works through me. So this masculine is some sort of divine channel as well. He is, and I feel the Holy Spirit coming through so strongly. Um, because even at the start, I was feeling the Holy Spirit on my right arm, which is my masculine side as well. Um, so the Holy Spirit is definitely working, definitely working 
very heavily with this masculine trying to I just feel trying to bring him fully into the light and I feel like he is oh yeah I told you stubborn 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 this masculine did not want they did not want to know and that's the sad part is that this person is actually some sort of warrior of God messenger of God They're, they're definitely through some sort of purification, return to innocence. And Mother Mary will definitely be helping this person to tap more into their inner child. To feed into all that their inner child needs right now. If their inner child needs love, if their inner child needs fun, if their inner child needs comfort. The Mother Mary energy will be um, working through this masculine as the Holy Spirit. But we, we got the... Yeah, this masculine, I feel this masculine's going through a major transformation, but he's got one final test. Yeah, th this is like the the anger, um, which is part of the ego death as well, going through the angry phase, angry at the world for keeping you stuck, angry at everyone around you for holding you back, angry at the world around you. But that card's about making the change. You know, you don't need to be angry at the world. You can actually make the change you do you want to see. And bring peace and harmony. This person's definitely got some sort of mission here. Peacekeepers or something. Some sort of peacekeeper energy. Or, I mean, I'm just look, keep looking at the world card. So, they, they, look, they definitely have a divine mission. A divine mission here. With you, Divine Feminine, I feel that. Holy holy Grail, Sacred Union. And the Enlightenment card. So this person's definitely been enlightened. And that's that. The gentleness. Be gentle with yourself. But also, say look. Again, another card of Sacred Mission. Divine Mission. And the Jesus card's here as well. Mm -hmm. This masculine could be working with Lord Jesus right now. Follow my lead. This masculine turned away from Jesus. Even though in past lives this has been some sort of ally of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I know this is what you do. <laughs> yeah. This, in, in past lives this person has been an ally to Jesus. But yet he turned away from God because of some sort of side and temptress Queen of Swords energy. Anything else? Oh, my goodness. Sorry, folks. Oh. In last night's, I couldn't stop laughing because in last night's reading, every time a card bent, oh, every time I'd bend in to pick up a card, a huge orb would come down as <laughs> It's like they were just sneaking behind me, getting me to throw cards on the floor. So, humble, yeah. I told you I feel this mask on through an, an ego day. Being humbled. I'm telling you, this person is about to have an encounter with someone who they think is just a nobody. This could be anyone. This could be someone who just asks your masculine for, you know, can you can you give me a pound um, to buy a bottle of water? I don't. I'm not. I'm not saying it is that, but it could be anyone like that at all. It could be like somebody who's sitting in the street, completely homeless, looking with nothing, and. They might ask your person to help them. There could be some, just, I think it'll probably be more than that. Yeah, the heart chakra. There's the heart chakra. There's higher heart opening here. Opening up to love. <sighs> love thy neighbour. Just what I was talking about at the start. This person's about to be tested to see if they can love thy neighbour. And then God, God will know then they're ready for this sacred union. That's what I feel. Yeah, the sun is about to be taken. I told you, night energy, Avalon energy. I'm feeling kind of dragons and knights. And this masculine is a powerful warrior of God. This is somebody who... Is a, is a follower of Jesus. 
or who was a follower of Jesus in past lives. And it could have been one of the disciples that Jesus said to at the time, love thy neighbour. Be the good Samaritan, help those in need. And this person could have been one of those disciples in past lives. And they've been tested in exactly the same way to see if they remember. And in my ears, like this, the whistling is so loud. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else from this deck, please? No. Okay. Be a light to the world. Don't be angry at the way things are in the world. Stand up and make a difference. Be the light in the world. There is enough darkness in the world, but we never have enough light. We always need more light. So, thank you. So I'm going to get, um, oops. I'll definitely just remember that date with Lady Portia's card on it for my <laughs> Or Lady Portia could be working with this masculine. Lady Portia could be working with this masculine right now. Um, let's see. Let's get one of these cards and then I'm going to get um, a dragon card to close out. Okay, we went okay. Any energies working with this masculine right now? Wow. <laughs> Priestess. This masculine may have been an Avalon Priestess because obviously the masculine feminine thing doesn't make a difference. But either way, this person is opening up to their intuition. Um, Mermaid of Lemuria bring more joy back. I'm and my next reading is all about Lemuria and Atlantis, so this could be just another reading for an extension of this reading. But I do feel that energy coming through strongly in my next reading as well. So let's see, any other energies working with this masculine? So Avalon Priestesses. So end of a cycle. Yeah, I told you this masculine's they've trying they've gone through some sort of transformation, but they have to make sure but God I feel is gonna give them one final test. Sorry, I just thought there was somebody standing right next to me there, that's so weird. Well, Mary Magdalene. This twin flame card, sacred marriage. This, I don't know that this person's been tested for a reason. And we take visionary. Yeah, I'm telling you, this person is some sort of beautiful visionary, somebody who is has going to be um, doing something amazing in the world. I feel do something amazing in the world. This person is being put through their paces for a reason. Bridget, you are a healer. That Celtic energy coming through again now. <coughs> Excuse me. Bridget has connections to Glastonbury and Avalon and things like that as well. Ireland, but also um, Avalon energy for Bridget too. Bridget is a beautiful, fiery energy. Passionate, but she's a healer first and foremost. Very connected to the fae and things like that too. You are the healer. I told you this masculine is a powerful healer. So I'm going to get some of my Avalon meshes. And then I'll get some dragon cards fresh out. I'll, I'm using the wisdom of the dragons. I cannot believe that was the first card out. <laughs> Divine Feminine, you could be the High Priestess from Avalon. Or your person was a high priestess in Avalon at some point. But it's definitely that energy coming through. Let me get some some of the Avalon meshes to see what wants to come through. What guidance wants to come through. And then I'll, um, I'll probably keep my next reading short. I'll just use one or two decks for that. Um, because that's going to be working with the angels of Atlantis. So let's see. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. One more and then I'll get a dragon card. Oh, 
Okay, so it says, welcome to solitude and it's time to replenish your weary soul. So this person is definitely spending time um, in solitary and trying to um, go through a transformation. Like I get kind of metamorphosis energy with a butterfly. Love always supports you and aligns you with your true purpose. So there's definitely here some something strong energy of divine purpose here through your connection with love. So love yourself for the courage you've shown to arrive at your best version today. So this masculine has definitely, I feel they've gone through it. I feel like a baptism of fire here. And I'm getting kind of rebirth energy. Um, I'll be interested to see what dragon cards come out. Um, so life will support the vision you have for yourself. And make it the best it can be. So this masculine has been pushed to keep on healing his inner child. And live his best life. And this one says, allow the true love of your soul to radiate and you shall see the natural beauty around you expand. And this is so true for everyone. The more you let your soul shine, the more you see the beauty in every moment. It's, that's all I can tell you. Your soul is not interested in material stuff. Your soul could have a chest full of gold and rubies and diamonds. And what would excite your soul more is a butterfly floating in past your face. That makes your soul happy. Seeing those beautiful moments of nature and all the beauty around us um, is what makes our soul, fills our soul with joy. So when, you know, this person is definitely going to be seeing the difference in the things that are important to them. Reprioritising, I feel. So... Let's get some wisdom from the dragons. I feel the dragon energy so strongly. I might use the dragon deck for my next reading as well. Let's see. Can I get some wisdom with the dragons, please? Okay. A few dragon energies and then I'll close out this reading and then I'll cleanse the space and let's get started on the next one for any star seeds. Well, this masculine was definitely in a dark place. And I felt that, I felt that is why, that's the, the first scripture card that came out. I can't even remember which one it was now. But it was God saying, if you reject me, um, I will have to show you, you know. And basically saying, I, can, I need to show you. <sighs> yeah, this masculine is part of the new world. The... The world is going to get to a place of joy and peace and harmony. And it's because of leaders and people who have been set specific missions to get into that energy. This masculine is definitely part of the new world. Definitely a strong Atlantis energy, Lemurian energy, Avalon. I mean, so much coming through for this masculine companion. So this is all about soul tribe. This masculine and you are calling on some sort of soul tribe. Um, now... You don't have to do anything. When your soul goes through their awakening, it automatically sends out a signal for your soul tribe. But you and this person have some sort of mission to do as companions as well. And I've been feeling that strongly throughout the reading. Gratitude. Gratitude is so important. Honestly, it's the most important part of your journey. Showing that gratitude every single day. Temple of the Sun. Now this is extremely, this is, this is when you're, the dragon from the Temple of the Sun comes out, this is someone who is very, very important to the divine. This is someone who is getting access to higher realms of knowledge. Merlin. Avalon energy. Magic. I told you this person has healing earth magic. Well, I'll get a quick zodiac dice for a close of the reading. Two more, I'll take two more. Earth chalice and fire chalice. This is rebirth. Earth magic being reborn through the earth and fire. Dragon energies. This person, some sort of dragon lord as well. Self worth, yeah. Now, the earth is all about getting grounded and your material. Um, abundance and the fire is all about action and goes through some sort of rebirth and I'll split the deck on water chalice this is emotions 
yeah, they're opening up to emotions. Scars. This person has had a lot of scars. This is all about seeing your scars and alchemizing them and making them. So scars of your past that have held you back, no longer see them as scars. See them as beautiful reminders of your journey and of the growth that you've made. But Marilyn, come on. Amazing. Okay, let's get a quick zodiac dice and then I will, as I say, I will quickly sage and then we will get another reading done. I don't know when they'll all load, but you can expect another one. So, Pisces and the moon in fifth house, Cancer, third house and the moon, Libra, south node and number eight. Pisces, two, and south node again. Leo, 11, and Neptune. Um, that is Virgo, Venus, and five. One more. Scorpio, Sun, and the number eight. Eighth house. Libra, five. And Saturn, one more row. So just start repeating them. I'm going to stop. So yeah, it's just repeating them again because that was that was Leo. So okay. So it was Leo, Leo, uh, Libra, Cancer, Pisces, Virgo, and Scorpio. The main signs that came through. So thank you all for watching. I usually close in prayer, but I'm going to close out in prayer in my next reading. And so I just want to tell you all, I see, I'll see you all in a bit. Whenever you watch this, there'll be another reading to follow on the same day. I don't know when you'll watch this. Maybe it'll be six months from now. But whenever you watch this, there's another message coming out just after this one, which is all about star seeds and Atlantis and Lemuria. So I hope you join me for that too. So take care. See you soon. Namaste.